Hello everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. Um, it's good to see so many of you here already. Um, my name is Maraid and I am based in Galway in the west of Ireland and it's currently really cold. <laughs> um, winter has definitely arrived um, just in time for Halloween. Um, so, as I said, my name is Maraid and I've been teaching for over 20 years now. And um, I've been with the TEFL Academy since 2015. Um, so it's, uh, it's great to see um, all of you attending this webinar um, and I hope it will be very useful. Um, today's webinar is actually one big long question and answer session. Okay, so I don't have a presentation like we normally do. Um, we're just going to devote the entire hour to answering all your questions. Um, now, I know it can be a bit overwhelming <laughs> um, to try and think of questions because um, I know for some reason our brain tends to convince us that we don't have questions when in reality we have dozens. Um, so why don't I give you a couple of categories that we tend to get a lot of questions about? Uh, maybe that will will jog your mind a little bit to, uh, to remind you of some questions you always wanted to ask. Um, so we tend to get a lot of questions about assignments. Okay, so whether you're doing the level three course or the level five course, um, you know, I'm sure you have some things you'd like to ask me about assignments and about assessment. Um, another category we tend to get a lot of questions about is grammar. Yeah, um, because for the vast majority of our students, the first exposure they ever get to grammar um, is during this course. So if you have any questions about grammar, please ask. I love talking about grammar. I would do it all day, every day if I could. Um, perhaps you have some questions about pronunciation. OK, that can also be like a whole new world of information that you have never considered before. Um, perhaps some of you are curious about finding jobs and about working and living abroad. Um, perhaps you have questions about putting together CVs um, or cover letters. Um, again, they are some things that um, you might want to ask me about. Um, you might have some questions about like actually teaching. Yeah, classroom management. Yeah, what do you do if you're teaching low levels? What can you do if you're teaching very advanced levels? Um, what do you do if you have a crowd of very boisterous kids? How do you keep control? All right, um, that is another very common area uh, that we get a lot of questions about. Okay, so hopefully I've jogged your, your brains sufficiently to start uh, writing in your questions into the chat box. Um, while I wait for some questions to come in, um, I'm going to look and see where you all are because like that is genuinely my favorite part of every webinar. <laughs> um, so we have Christo and Quinn. Hi there, welcome. And Alexandra and um, John in Edinburgh, up oh, just across the water, John. We're practically neighbors. Ireland and Scotland. Um, Lee Karen from Baton Rouge. Oh, that's Louisiana, right? Um, I know that because of a Garth Brooks song. <laughs> All right, welcome, Lee Karen. Um, Eileen also in Scotland. We have South Africa. Hello, Timothy. And we have Zana from Georgia. Hi, Zana. I think we've met before, right? Um, I recognize that beautiful name. Um, Candice, how are you doing? Hope all is good in London. <laughs> um, we have Southern California. Um, Avas in South Africa. I've definitely seen you here before, Avas. Good to see you again. And Quinn in Toronto. Ah, amazing. Quinn, I was meant to visit Toronto, but then COVID happened and I had to cancel my trip. So I'm still heartbroken. <laughs> but one day, one day we will make Toronto. All right, so welcome everybody. Um, all right, so Christo, you are in with our first question. Is it important to, I presume you mean here, to learn the phonetics by heart, or is it important to know it by heart? Um, Christo, honestly, no, it's not super important. Um, 
you know, every classroom will have a, a phonetics chart. Yeah, or every textbook will typically have a phonetics chart in the back of it or in the front of it. Um, so no, you don't need to learn it by heart. Um, you will always have access to a chart, um, even if you have to bring it in yourself. Okay, so no, worry less about learning it by heart and more about just understanding it. Okay, um, as long as you understand it, um, that's the most important thing. Um, I know when we start off with phonetics, it can all seem like very, very confusing and very overwhelming. But um, trust me, Crystal, when I say phonetics is something that you just learn by teaching. Okay, so every time you teach a new symbol, you then know that symbol for the next time. And then, of course, you teach new symbols. But then once you've taught them, they also become part of your repertoire. So yeah don't worry about learning them by heart just worry about um understanding them okay and you know you may well know them by heart in the end um like i know after 10 12 years um i finally knew them by heart <laughs> um but it's, it's it's not something that you need to be concerned about all right thank you crystal Okay, so hello there, Kangalani. Oh, what a fabulous name. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. Um, what's the likelihood that you will be teaching someone who knows no English at all? Um, well, it's possible, okay? I have done it. <laughs> um, it's not the most likely scenario or the most common scenario anymore, Kangalani. Um, generally, the vast majority of students will at least know some words, like everyone will know, hello, thank you. Yeah, um, they'll know the universal words like taxi, hotel. <laughs> yeah, um, all of the words that their language has borrowed from English. Um, but no, it has happened. Um, I would say that it tends to be um, perhaps older students, okay? Um, I'm not saying old, I'm just saying older. Um, yeah, you may get adults who perhaps did not learn it at school. Maybe learning English wasn't a thing when they were at school. Okay. Um, a lot of um, older people will be learning English to go travel, maybe visit family in English speaking countries. Um, so it is possible. Yeah, um, it does happen, but it's not as common as it used to be. Um, if you do find that you're teaching someone um, who has zero English, don't worry, okay? All of the same principles still apply, okay? It's not like you need to do something radically different if a person has no English, you don't. Just follow the steps, okay? Um, do what you would do with, um, with learners of any level. Um, I would say, though, it is important that you um, are very aware of grading your language. Okay, keep everything super, super basic and use as many visual aids as you can, um, whether that's bringing in pictures of items, um, whether it's using a lot of um, body language, a lot of miming. Yeah, just try to keep things as visual as you can, as slow as you can right in the beginning. Yeah, and, you know, don't aim to cover too much too quickly, okay? Um, really, it's your ideal opportunity to, like, build a base <laughs> from zero, okay? Um, so, yeah, thank you, Kangalani, for your question. Uh, so, hello, Alexandra, Portugal. Oh, how wonderful. What a beautiful country. Okay, we have Cape Town. Amazing. Um. So Kangalani again, I have 21 days left for my course and I need to upload my assignments. Will I still have enough time to have each assignment marked? Um, well, as I'm sure you all know, um, in our terms and conditions, we say that assignments can take up to five working days to be marked. Okay, now bear in mind working days, so the weekends don't count. Um, 
Now, it could be, Kangalani, that your assignments get turned around much more quickly, yeah, um, depending on your marker and how busy they are. Um, it might take two working days instead of five, okay, but we cannot guarantee that. Um, so I would say try to allow for five working days per assignment and, you know, see how you go. If you get down to your final couple of days and you haven't um, submitted your last assignment yet, um, then it's time to contact student services and inquire about your extension options. Okay, um, we have a wide range of um, options for you to extend your course. You know, maybe you only need to extend by a week. Yeah, maybe a few days, maybe two weeks. Um, it depends really on your um, on your situation. Um, you will also notice in our terms and conditions, we say that we advise submitting assignment C um, two weeks before your enrollment expires. Okay. Um, if you can do that, that would be amazing, okay? Uh, because that means that you submit your assignment, it gets graded, and if you need to resub for whatever reason, you still have enough time left to resub and get it regraded, okay? Um, so for all of you that are maybe just starting out on your course, um, bear that in mind. Aim to have assignment C submitted two weeks before your enrollment expires, okay? Um, but if you are at the end of your course and you are running out of time, don't panic. There are um, extension options available. Um, so you just need to contact student services, okay? And they will tell you everything. Um, but yeah, Kangalani, just wait until you have a couple of days left. Like wait until you're sure that you won't get it submitted. Yeah, and then contact student services. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed, it will all work out. All right, thank you. So hello, Jana. How long will it take for the certificate to arrive in Georgia to BC? Oh my goodness, Anna, I'm genuinely not sure. <laughs> um, I'm not very well aware of the uh, postal times. Um, I don't work in the admin department, um, but you can send a ticket to, to student support Okay, and they will be able to give you an answer. Um, so generally everyone, any questions you have about certificates or about extensions or about the administration side of things, always contact student support. Um, if you have a question about assignments or about the course content, you can contact tutor support. Okay, um, so yes. Sana, send your ticket to student support and they will be able to help you. Okay, so hello, Candice. Um, hi, I'm looking for an online teacher position. I don't know where to begin. There are so many companies, so many. <laughs> um, which online one-to-one -one company would you recommend that is reliable, pays well, and is flexible? Ah, uh, Candice, this is the million dollar question. Um, honestly, I would hesitate to recommend one particular one, okay, for the simple reason that I haven't worked um, for many of them, okay, um, and, you know, I don't want to put you off <laughs> potential companies that might be perfectly fine. Um, so, I would say, Candice, um, do apply for whatever you think looks interesting, okay? Um, but also do your own research. You know, um, one thing about um, TEFL teachers, um, we do not tend to stay silent if we discover something <laughs> something that, that isn't legitimate. Um, so always Google whatever company you are interested in. Um, check out the teaching forums. Um, you know, and you will find a lot of information from teachers who have worked for them. And, uh, you know, you'll hear some companies get glowing reviews and you'll hear other companies um, not so much. <laughs> okay, um, you find a lot of unhappy teachers who worked for them and did not enjoy the experience. Um, so really do your research, okay? Um, 
I can't say that I've ever come across any really bad one. Okay, maybe I've been lucky. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's up to it's up to teachers to do their research as much as they can. Okay. So apologies for not answering your question, Candice. Um, that's the best I can do, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, so hello, Lee Karen. Um, will there be a tutor available to review our assignments with us after grading to discuss errors? Um, well, Lee Karen, how it works is that you um, submit your assignment. Okay, it gets allocated to a grader um, or, or a tutor, as you say. Um, that doesn't mean that your tutor will be the same for all of the assignments. Yeah, um, maybe it will be the same marker, but maybe it won't. Okay, so, you know, you don't have one dedicated tutor all the way through the course. Okay, so that's important to be aware of um, from the beginning. Um, so, Lee Karen, when you submit your assignment, your tutor will grade it and either you will pass, which is amazing. <laughs> okay, fingers crossed. Um, if you pass, the marker will give you lots and lots of feedback on all of the individual parts of the assignment. Okay, um, so they will tell you what was good and what you can do better the next time. Okay, there will always be detailed feedback. So if you don't pass, um, you may be asked to resubmit. Okay, um, so if you have to resubmit, um, your tutor will give you a lot of feedback. Um, they will just tell you the things that you need to improve. All right. So um, read your feedback form carefully. Make all of the changes that your tutor recommends and then resubmit. All right. Um, the same tutor will grade your resubmission. So, you know, there will be continuity there. All right. And then hopefully the second time, um, you will pass. Okay. Um, you have three opportunities to submit in total. All right. So, you know, don't panic. If the first one is a resubmit, go resubmit it. If the second submission is also still in need of some work, you do have one more chance to resubmit and your tutor will give you feedback to help you. So yeah, there we go, Lee Karen. Lots, lots of help, lots of feedback. All right. And as always, if there's anything in the feedback you don't understand, or if there's any part of the assignment that you just can't wrap your head around, um, send a ticket to tutor support. Um, that is a team of um, a team of very experienced teachers, um, myself included. I'm also on the tutor support team, and you know we will be able to help you with whatever you need related to assignments or course content. All right, so thank you, Lee Karen. Okay, so hello, Jan. Um, any advice you can offer with regards to teaching abroad would be much appreciated. My plan is to settle in Western Hungary. Oh, wow, with my wife and start teaching there. Oh, amazing, how exciting, John. Uh, that sounds amazing. Um, I get so excited thinking about you all going to teach abroad. Um, I've done all of that. Um, I was abroad for 15 years working in different countries and, and then I came home, um, <laughs> home to Ireland. So I always get super excited when I, when I hear people going abroad to teach. Um, I would say, Jan, do your research, okay? Um, same as I said to Candice before, um, if you know exactly the region you're going to, um, you already have a bit of a head start. Um, because, you know, you can start Googling immediately, like what schools are in the region you're going to? Um, are they big schools? You know, are they smaller ones? Um, do they have nice websites? Okay, is there anyone in particular you like the look of? Um, again, try to read as many reviews as you can of each school, and that'll give you an idea. Um, you know, you can email them, um, send them your CV, or you can call them. Um, really, the only way is to just get out there and let them know that you are interested. OK, um, it may be possible to arrange a job before you move. Yeah, if that's something that, that you would like, um, it, can all, it can always be a nice little safety net, like knowing you have a job to go to. Um, 
On the other hand, if you can afford to move out there um, and then go looking for jobs, that's also a really good option because you don't have to email or call. You can yeah, literally go along to the school and see it. Okay. Um, if you find that there aren't a lot of language schools or English schools in the place you're going, um, you have two options. You might decide to work online, okay? Um, because if you do that, it doesn't matter where you are. You know, you can move to Hungary, but still work online, okay? So that that could even be a good option for, for when you first arrive, yeah? Um, another option, of course, is that you can start working yourself freelance as a private teacher, okay? Um, again, that is something that you would have to suss out when you when you move over there to see if there is a market for it. Okay. Um, but yeah, apart from that, John, you know, just enjoy it and try not to get too stressed. Um, I always found that when I moved to a new country initially, um, I always needed more money than I thought I did. <laughs> um, the first few, like the first few weeks in a new country are really expensive, um, mainly because, you know, you typically have to rent somewhere to live. You need to give a deposit. You need to give a couple of extra months rent, um, depending on the country. Um, yeah, you have all of the expenses of like buying new stuff. Um, you know, you're probably eating out a lot. You're probably traveling around a lot. So yeah, my biggest tip would be would probably be have more money than you think you need. <laughs> um, whether or not you want a job lined up before you go or not, you know, is up to you. Some people like having that safety net. Others prefer to just launch themselves in and uh, call around to, to schools um, in person. Uh, but yeah, good luck. I'm excited for you. I'm sure you'll absolutely rock it. Um, yeah, let us know how you get on. All right, thank you, John. So hello, Poke. Um, I'm having trouble keeping some young learners attention. Is it my problem? Oh, mm. <laughs> do I need to adjust my teaching style and material? Or do I have to accept that there are some children that just don't focus? Oh, yes, Poke. Mm. Both of those things could be an issue. Okay. Um, you know, children will be children <laughs> regardless. Um, you know, you will never get the, the the perfect class of obedient children. And honestly, you probably wouldn't really want that either. You know, it, it's more fun when they're exuberant. Yeah, when they're enthusiastic about everything, when they just want to throw themselves into every activity, etc. cetera. Um, so there are definitely some children who, who are harder to manage than others. Um, but, you know, it's always worth looking at your own teaching style and the material too, you know, because that could be a contributing factor too. Um, so I think the key for teaching young children is to remember that their attention spans are very short, okay? And they don't typically enjoy sitting down for any length of time. So when you're planning your lesson, you want to aim for, um, short-ish activities, you know, depending on the age. You know, if you're teaching like four and five-year-olds, you know, your activity might only be five minutes long, okay, or seven or eight minutes long, okay, any more than that and you will lose them. Um, the older kids, maybe the eight and nine-year-olds, they might run to say 15 minutes um, of focus, yeah, but after that you would need to just change the activity, okay. Um, so if you find yourself trying to drag out activities over a long period of time, um, that could contribute to the children getting a bit restless because, you know, they just can't focus that long. All right. Um, also, Poke, when you're planning activities, um, as we said, you will probably have lots of shorter activities. Um, try to keep those activities varied. So if you have one activity where children are all sitting at their table, um, you know, sitting on a chair at a table, try to make sure then that the next activity involves something different. Maybe they get to stand up and move around. Yeah. Or maybe they do some sort of, of um, movement game. Okay. Musical chairs or Simon Says or like running dictation or something. 
Um, so, you know, try to vary the activity um, styles so that they're not always just sitting down because, yeah, they will lose attention for sure. Um, when it comes to material poke, try to keep things as as bright and as colorful and as um, appealing as you can. OK, um, you know, of course, sometimes we just have um, handouts, yeah, black and white handouts, yeah, maybe for grammar practice or maybe vocabulary, you know, and that's fine. But try to make sure that not everything is just black and white paper. Yeah. Incorporate color, incorporate flashcards. Yeah. Um, if you're making your own materials, try to use like fun fonts. OK. Um, try to use as many images as you can, etc. OK. Um, so, yeah, it is challenging for sure, teaching young learners. Um, it's a lot of work for the teacher in terms of classroom management and in terms of planning so many activities, but it is worth it. OK. And once you find activities that work um, or like sequences of activities that work, you know, you can use that with with all of your different classes. Um, just varying the content to suit their level. Um, but yeah, look, if you do all of that and there are still children who are a little bit um, restless, you know, don't worry. <laughs> it's not, the likelihood is it's not you, it's them. <laughs> okay, and all you can do is, is do your best to keep them busy and engaged. All right, thank you, Poke. Good luck with them. Um, so, hello, Alexandra. I've just started my course. How important is it for us to read the suggested extra bibliography references at this stage? Um, well, Alexandra, I would say that if you have time to do it, it is worth doing it. OK, even if you don't read all of them, um, try to at least read like one or two extra resources around the topic. Um, if you really don't have time, um, and you just need to like get through the units really quickly. I guess what you could do is just copy and paste the links onto your own document. And then as you have time, yeah, start reading through them. Okay. Um, that might be a good solution if, if you don't have a lot of time and just need to get the units done. Um, but if you do have time, yeah, please do as much of the extra reading as you can. OK, um, it is all really, really important to build your your foundation um, of teaching skills. All right. Thank you, Alexandra. And so hello, Elena. I'm about to start my first assignment for level five TEFL. Oh, congratulations. Just wondering if it's OK to use Harvard referencing. Um, yeah, absolutely, Elena. Um, you'll notice that when you get to unit five and you see all of the assignment templates, um, we do have a referencing guide. Um, you know, we have a document there telling you how to reference. Um, I'm pretty sure we do recommend the Harvard referencing um, style. But look, really, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Yeah. And as long as everything is referenced properly and um, the system doesn't matter so much. But yeah, take a look at that document because I'm pretty sure we do recommend the Harvard style. OK, um, so hello, Lee Karen. Will we receive a recommendation letter along with the certificate? Um, no, Lee Karen, you will not, I'm afraid. Um, just the certificate. Um, you can get a letter from Student Services stating that you have completed the course. Yeah, but as for recommendations, no, we don't do that. OK, thank you, Lee Karen. <clears throat> okay, um, so hello Quinn, can a college diploma meet the requirement for post-secondary education on a job application? Mm, I would imagine so Quinn, but I guess um, it would depend on the country that the job is in. Um, you know, I couldn't say for certain because I know every country has their own um, requirements um, when it comes to recruiting or when it comes to getting a work visa, etc. Um, so I would advise that you follow up with the specific job application um, in order to find the answer to that. Okay. 
Um, yeah, send them an email and ask. I mean, it sounds perfectly reasonable, but yeah, check with them just to be sure. Okay, hello, Timothy. I'm starting my assignment B on level three and not sure how to start. Um, does assignment B, go, um, is assignment B going to follow the same route as assignment A with a warmer? Um, well, Timothy, um, assignment B is a little different. Um, in assignment B, level three assignment B, um, you're given a lesson plan and you need to, to suggest improvements, okay? Because the lesson plan is not very good, okay? So it's up to you to find the problems with the lesson plan and to suggest um, improvements, okay? Um, but yes, the lesson plan follows all of the stages that you saw in assignment A. So there will be a warmer, a presentation, a control practice, and a freer practice, and hopefully a plenary. Okay. Um, if you have any problems with the instructions, Timothy, send a ticket along to tutor support, and we will be more than happy to help. All right. Thank you, Timothy. Um, John, hey, oh, you, yeah, you were moving to Hungary, um, which is close to the Austrian border. Oh, how exciting. It sounds beautiful. <laughs> um, anything close to Austria must be beautiful. All right. Um, so, Elena, do you know if it's possible to become an EEL teacher with level five qualification in Scotland? It is a teaching qualification. I also have a BA in health and social studies. Um, well, again, Alina, I'm not super familiar with the Scottish system. Um, I know in Ireland, you would probably need to be a qualified primary teacher already. Yeah, like you would need to have done your, your master's in primary teaching. Um, but I'm really not sure, I'm afraid. Um, I don't really know this, the system in Scotland. But, you know, it's well worth researching. You know, if you could, that would be great. Um, but yeah, you, you'd have to research the, the Scottish system. All right, thank you. Okay, um, let's see, Sergito, I'm looking for an online teacher position in Brazil and Portugal. Um, is there top three companies that you can recommend? Uh, so Sergito, I'm not sure if you um, heard my answer to Candice. Um, I'm not really, I'm going to recommend anybody because I don't want to put you off like potentially really good companies. Um, plus, I haven't worked for a lot of them myself. And, you know, when I haven't worked for them personally, um, I would hesitate to recommend or not. Um, what I would say, Sergito, is um, go to our job website. OK, go to the TEFL Academy Jobs Board. Um, go to the jobs board on TEFL.com. Um, I don't know if you've all heard of that website. It's www.tefl.com. Um, they have a really good online section. Um, that jobs board and our jobs board, I know to be, you know, to be reliable. Um, I've never come across any, any nasty scams on them. <laughs> um, so check out those two jobs boards. Um, also, um, I think all of you, if you don't have a LinkedIn account, um, you should definitely get one. Um, I know a lot of companies recruit via LinkedIn. Okay, so get yourselves a profile. State clearly that you are um, qualified teachers looking for online teaching positions or in-person teaching positions. And yeah, don't be surprised if you get a lot of um, job, job offers um, through LinkedIn. Okay, they also have a really good jobs advertisement board. All right, so thank you, Sejito. Okay, Christo, will I have to do a video in the first assignment? Um, no, Christo, are you doing the level three or the level five? Um, yeah, neither of those require a video, okay? It will all be, be paper-based or computer-based, okay? No videos, no need to record anything. All right. <clears throat> okay. So... Um, oh, hang on, Zana, I meant to click you. I'll come to you in a second, Rachel. Um, so Zana, do employers give preferences to native speakers? Um, Zana, 
I really hope not. Okay. Um, there is a massive movement in the world of TEFL at the moment um, that is, you know, trying to dismantle this native speakerism. Um, you know, nobody wants to see it anymore. Okay. I would say if a company does only want to recruit native speakers, um, they are not a company worth working for. Okay. Um, in any case, I think the number of non-native teachers like vastly um, outweighs the number of native speakers, uh, teachers. Um, so, you know, I would really hope that you don't come across that type of discrimination. Um, I know there are plenty of schools and plenty of, of companies that just want good teachers. Okay, it doesn't matter where they're from. Okay, they just need good teachers. Okay, um, so yeah, I really hope that in this day and age, Sana, that is not going to be an issue for you. Okay, um, so Rachel, I'm doing assignment B. Do you have any tips? Oh, Rachel, so many tips. <laughs> um, so um, are you talking about level five? Um, if you are, um, level five assignment B is a grammar lesson okay you will be planning a grammar lesson all about the first conditional okay um so the first conditional is if um present simple and future simple so an idea um an example would be if i have time later i'll see my friends okay so if i have time i'll see my friends um so i would say rachel before you ever start um planning your lesson or finding materials spend time researching the first conditional okay make sure you know what it is yeah make sure you know the meaning the form um make sure you know the um pronunciation difficulties etc okay spend as much time as you need to getting the first conditional straight in your head um, because then when you do start um doing your lesson plan know it will all make a lot more sense okay and you know that goes to all of you whether it's level three or level five if you ever find yourself um planning a grammar lesson or having to do a grammar lesson make sure you understand the actual grammar first okay because believe me it will be next to impossible to plan if you don't know what you're teaching inside out okay um Apart from that, Rachel, um, I would say send a ticket to Tutor Support. Um, we have an email with a lot of tips, like explaining the assignment in great detail. Yeah, so send a ticket to Tutor Support asking for more information about assignment B, and we'll be able to send you, um, you know, an in-depth um, description of the assignment, and that will help you a lot. Okay, um, in terms of templates, um, well, all of the templates will be on the instruction page. Um, so you will have your PPP table, um, you will have your lesson plan, you will have your teacher language, you will have your materials, you will have your bibliography, and you will have your board plan. Okay, um, so it would be six, <laughs> um, six assign, uh, six templates in total. Okay, uh, but yeah, they are all on the instructions page. You will find them all there together. All right. Okay, Candice, um, I don't have any teaching experience. I've almost completed my level five combined course and I'm finishing assignment C. Do you think I will still find a job with no experience? Oh, absolutely, Candice, no doubt. Um, TEFL is one of those um, professions where you don't need a ton of experience, okay? You know, we all started off somewhere. <laughs> um, I started out like, what, 20 years ago? I had no problems finding my first job, okay? And, you know, new teachers don't tend to have problems. Um, that is because there is such there is just such a demand for it. There's such a demand for um, EFL teachers um, abroad and online. 
Okay, and I think you'll find that a lot of schools actually prefer newly qualified teachers because they can kind of um, mold them <laughs> into the, the type of teachers they want them to be. All right. Um, you know, some schools will have a very specific uh, educational viewpoint. Yeah. And, you know, they will like the fact that they can like influence new teachers um, into doing things their way. Okay, whereas more experienced teachers, that might be that might not be so easy. Um, so yeah, please don't worry about the lack of experience. Like hand on heart, I can say that it's it's not a problem. All right. Um, so hello, Louise. I have no I I don't have any qualifications or teaching background. Mm -hmm. Will this course be of benefit to me? I have never taught before. Um, yeah, absolutely, Louise. Um, you know, this course is intended um, for people without any teaching experience. You know, um, if you do have teaching experience, great, but it's absolutely not necessary in order to do the course. Okay, and at the end of the course, Louise, you will be qualified as a teacher. Okay, you will have your level five qualification um, for TEFL. All right. Um, so yeah, I hope you really enjoy it. I hope it's worthwhile for you. Um, I'm sure it will be. Okay, uh, so hello Bahama, Bahama Mama in Italy. Ooh, nice. What two beautiful places to combine. Um, so is it possible to get a teaching position with the level five certificate only? Thanks. Um, yes, Bahama Mama, absolutely. Um, it is possible. Um, I guess it depends on the country you want to work in. Um, some countries um, will require you to get a work visa, okay? Um, work visas typically require some sort of degree. Um, but on the other hand, there are lots of countries that don't require a work visa or they don't require you to have a degree. So, yeah, it's just a matter of doing your research and finding out what the country you want to work in requires. All right, but yeah, there are definitely loads of jobs out there um, with the level five certificate. Um, if you want to look at our jobs board, our TEFL Academy jobs board, um, you can actually search through the jobs. You can filter them um, by degree required or degree not required. Okay, so if you change the filter to degree not required, it will give you all of your options. And of course, for teaching online, um, there is no visa requirement that I know of. Um, so yeah, there should be a lot of, of jobs available online too that will not require you to have a degree. All right. Okay, so Rachel, do I have to use stress? Oh, do you mean word stress? Um, in that case, yes, you do, Rachel. Um, stress is like an important factor in pronunciation. Um, but, you know, all, it, all stress means is emphasis. Like when you say a sentence, what words are emphasized or what words are said with, with more strength? Okay, that's all that means. Okay, um, but yeah, you will need to analyze stress for sure in the PPP table. All right. So, Alexandra, after the level five course, I saw that there is a complementary study course that we can take. Could you please explain it? Um, well, yes, Alexandra, we have a number of um, add on courses. Um, so, for example, we have 30 hour courses in teaching online or teaching young learners or teaching business. OK, um, so they are like additional top up courses. Um, it could also be that you mean um, the observed teaching practice course. Um, so we also have an observed teaching one. Um, so if you start working, yeah, if you find a job after you complete your course um, and you decide to do the observed teaching practice, um, you will be able to record yourself teaching and you will get feedback from a very experienced um, teacher. Okay. Um, so the teacher will watch, the tutor will watch the video of you teaching and 
you know, they will tell you, okay, what you did really well, what you could do better, and then give you suggestions on how to improve. Um, the observed teaching practice course is actually really useful um, because it, you know, we also require you to complete a reflection journal. Um, so, you know, that makes you think a lot about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Okay. And again, um, together with the videos that you submit, um, your tutor will give you a lot of very, very useful feedback that way. Um, so the observed teaching practice course is, you know, it's very practical. Okay. You know, we leave aside the theory of the, the um, 168 hour level five course, and we just focus on like practical teaching. Okay. Um, as I said, though, Alexandra, you need to have a job, you need to be teaching regularly. Yeah, in order to be able to record yourself teaching your class. Um, if it's something that you're interested in, um, please get in touch with student support and they will run through all of the options for you. All right, so thank you, Alexandra. Um, good luck with whatever you decide to do. Um, I hope you do, you do decide to uh, carry on learning with us. Okay. So hello again, Quinn. Um, should I finish the online modules for the in-person class on the 9th of September? What are we taught in the in-person class? Ah, good question, Quinn. Um, so it doesn't really matter, Quinn, is the answer. Um, the in-person class is like a standalone thing, you know. Um, we get students there who haven't even started the online modules. Um, we have students there who are halfway through the modules. We have students there who are finished the modules. Um, genuinely, it doesn't matter, okay, because the way the course is structured, um, you know, it's useful for everybody, regardless of where they are in the online, in the online module or in the online course, okay. Um, the tutors there will, you know, they will explain every section as if nobody has seen it before. So, you know, everybody is starting on on a on a level <laughs> on a level pitch all right um so yeah if you do happen to get all the modules finished you know that's great but don't worry about it it, it won't be an impediment if you haven't um so in the online or no i've got online on the brain on the in-person course um quinn you will cover a lot of themes that are in the online modules um but the difference is that it will be much more practical. Like you will get the chance to do some teaching practice with your peers, okay? Um, you know, it'll just give you a chance to stand up in front of a, a group of people and try to teach them something, all right? Um, so, you know, it has a definite emphasis on the practical skills. Um, so, you know, think of it as your opportunity to, yeah, to practice. All right. Um, it's nothing to be scared of doing the the uh, teaching practices. You know, it's nothing to worry about. Your tutor will have you prepared very, very well for it. OK, um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I used to teach those weekend courses for, um, yeah, for years and years and years pre-COVID. And it was always just a, a wonderful time. I guarantee you'll have a great day. OK. Um, Candice, as a teacher, how much of your own resources do you create? They can be quite time consuming to carry out. How do you manage your time efficiently when making your own resources? Oh, absolutely, Candice. It takes quite a bit of time, um, especially in the beginning. Um, the good news is that the more you do it, you know, the more you can shortcut things. <laughs> OK, um, the more you can evaluate things and, you know, make decisions a lot more quickly. Um, also, the more materials you make, the more you then have to use in the future. So, you know, if you are teaching an elementary class now and you make some really good materials around certain topics, um, you will have all of that material still for when you teach the next group of new elementary students. Um, so, you know, any material that you do create, keep it, yeah, file it away, yeah, or, or scan it and keep it on your computer. Because the beauty of it is, once you've created it once, you have it forever. 
um, um, I would also say, Candice, um, we do typically use course books, like every, like a language school will generally have a, a course book for their students. So, you know, a lot of times what's in the course book might not be perfect, but it might be good enough. Okay. So, you know, you have to really ask yourself, like, is this so bad it can't be used? And if it is so bad it can't be used, make your own stuff. Absolutely. But if it's okay, and if you can just supplement it with some extra tasks, um, maybe try doing that just to cut down on the work of making like so much <laughs> new material. Okay. Um, I do think, you know, when you start teaching, you know, as a, as a brand new teacher, um, it's a lot of added stress and a lot of added pressure to put on yourself to go making tons of new stuff. Okay. So, you know, don't just make it for the sake of it, only make it if you think it's necessary and then keep it <laughs> and reuse it loads and loads of times um, in the years to come. Okay. Um, I would say try to prioritize lesson planning over materials creation, especially when you start. Okay. Then once you get a handle on lesson planning and, you know, once you get into your groove, um, then you will naturally find that you have more time um, to put into materials creation. All right. So I think I answered the question. <laughs> I hope I answered the question. Um, but yeah, good luck. I do love materials writing. It is really, really fun. Like it's a great opportunity to be creative. Um, so yeah, hopefully you really enjoy that. All right, Timothy, level three AB. When we do the improvements, do we have to do it by bullet points or paragraph form? Um, it doesn't matter, Timothy, either. You know, as long as it's clear what what the issue is and how you would improve it. Um, you know, whatever you prefer. Um, you know, our tutors really don't mind as long as it's clear. All right. Okay, Poke, the add-on courses, Teaching and Learning is Business Online, 30 hours. Is it recommended to do them after the main course? Um, but when I do them, do they all happen at once or one at a time? Um, well, Poke, you can do them anytime, okay? Um, anytime at all. Um, it doesn't have to be directly after you finish. You might want to take a break and then go back to it. Um, I would advise you to do them one by one. Yeah, I think it might be a bit much juggling all three at once. Um, so yeah, you know, do them at your own speed. There is there is no immediate rush. Um, I would say just contact student services and um, just double check with them that there are no um, time limits on them. I don't think there are. Okay. Um, so to the best of my knowledge, you can do them anytime and at your own speed. Okay. Um, so yeah, hopefully you will find them useful. They are some really, really nice short courses and they can add a lot. I think they can add a lot of value to your teaching. Okay. And Alexandra, you are so welcome. And Candice, you are welcome. And Timothy and Quinn, you are more than welcome. I'm, I'm very happy to help. Um, I remember when I was was starting out on my my teaching odyssey <laughs> back in the day. Um, I was always full of questions, and generally teachers are a very helpful bunch. Okay, like we all we just want to help, <laughs> and I'm sure when all of you are are experienced and like years and years down the line, you will also be only too happy to help. Um, newly qualified colleagues um yeah it's a lovely profession i think you you'll all really enjoy it okay um i have to say yeah i've just seen the most amazing countries done the most amazing things and the students oh just i've had the most wonderful students um throughout the years I think, you know, the travel and everything is super exciting, but it's really the students that you'll remember, um, the students and your colleagues, <laughs> because, yeah. 
I think every every uh, TEFL teacher just kind of shares that spirit of, you know, willingness to try new things and, you know, desire to help and desire to uh, help students improve. And uh, yeah, it, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful profession. I'm, I'm so excited for you all <laughs> starting out. Okay. Um, so Elena, are there any good time management books? For your new teachers could you recommend something please um i don't think so elena um, i've never come across a time management book um no never actually hmm, that's a bit of a gap in the market um i would say elena it just depends on your workload um you know it it really depends on the the number of hours you're teaching a week OK, you know, it's kind of up to you to manage your own time um, because, you know, every teacher's circumstance is different. Like you may have a person teaching 12 hours a week and you may have a colleague who's teaching 30 hours a week. OK, so, you know, it's just kind of up to the individual to manage their time according to their situation. Um, I would say for new teachers, like for brand new teachers, if at all possible, um, try not to jump into like a full-time, full-on teaching schedule. Um, I understand that most people have to because, you know, financially they need to work the hours to, <laughs> to make money to survive. But if you can at all even reduce, you know, your full-time week in the beginning, um, that would be really valuable because it is like when you start teaching, you're, you could be planning like, um 30 lessons a week you know can you imagine that you know we're lucky because there are typically course books to help us so we're just kind of planning around the book in the beginning but anything you do to reduce your hours in the beginning you know will be very very welcome if you can afford to do that you know try not to overwhelm yourself too much with too many classes and too many lessons to plan um, even if it's just for a few weeks, you know, after the first two weeks, maybe, you know, your students, you know, you have a better feel for being in the classroom. Um, you know, your lesson planning will get quicker the more you do it. So if you can just give yourself a week or two to ease in, um, then you'll be able to uh, have an idea of how to manage your time better. All right. So thank you, Alina. OK. Um, so, Krista, what is important for assignment A level five? Ah, so, Krista, Krista, as I said to Rachel earlier, I recommend that you send a ticket to tutor support um, asking about assignment A level five. OK, and then we will be able to send you a nice, long, detailed email going through the assignment step by step and giving you the tips you need. OK, um, so, yeah email tutor support, send a ticket, and we will get all of that information to you, Christo. Okay. Um, so, Alexandra. Yeah, thank you. It is a nice initiative. I do love a good q and I think it's really important. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Rose, will we be having a teaching practice in level five? I did not sign up for the observed teaching practice. Um, Oh, so Rose, the observed teaching practice is a separate course. OK, it's it's different. OK, um, it's not obligatory. OK, um, so in the normal level five course, no, there is no teaching practice element. OK, um, observed teaching is just an additional extra if you want to do it once you finish the level five course. All right. And time for one more question. We have like one minute left only. Um, what advice would you give to new teachers coming into the profession? Um, oh, Candice, just enjoy it, you know, just go with an open mind and an open heart and a, a spirit of adventure. OK, um, you know, really, that's all. If, as long as you as long as it's something you want to do and you want to make the most of. Um, you will make it happen. Okay, just open mind, open heart, spirit of adventure, and uh, be willing to learn a lot. 
<laughs> genuinely, if you can have those things, everything else will fall into place. All right. Um, so, Jan. Oh, thank you, Jan. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Um, thank you so much for coming along. Um, it's been lovely to talk to you all today. Um, old names, new names. Um, thank you all for taking time out of your Saturday to come join us. Um, as always, um, this webinar will be posted on our YouTube channel along with all of the other ones. Okay, so early next week it should be up there just in case you want to uh, listen back to any of the answers. Okay, um, I guess then we are finished. Gosh, that went very, very quickly. <laughs> I find it's always a very quick hour. Um, I'm going to put up the slide um, for our end of webinar survey. Um, if you do have one more minute to complete it for us, that would be amazing. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll put up the slide and leave it there for a while. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can hear your opinions. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. And we will see you again, same time next week. All right. Bye bye.